Sometimes you gotta tear down before you build up. This huge 19th century barn in Allentown, New Jersey has seen better days. Is this one here? Dun, dun, dun. It's coming downtown, baby. But there's still plenty to save, like hand-hewn chestnut beams that are about to hold a flat screen TV. And this old chicken coop, we've got big plans for it. A tool shed with attitude. Every old building may hide a fortune and treasure. From doors to mantles to fixtures, there are big rewards if you know where to look. I'm Matt White, along with my brother Josh and my father Steve, we have a family-run architectural salvage business. We sell some of what we find as is, and some we reinvent to use in other jobs, where whatever we can imagine is the limit. We love salvage, from cool antiques to building materials. We find and sell a lot of stuff that other people have overlooked. We just got a call from a, uh, a client that's looking for uh, an old tool shed, something like an old farmhouse style, mm. kind of rustic. That's though, interesting, because uh, I just got back from a really banging looking uh, barn job up in Allentown, New Jersey. Uh -huh. And guess what? I saw some really, really killer beams. I mean, you know. Eight by ten by like twenty-five footers. Oh, they're getting scarce. Yeah, and all the hand hewn. I think they're chestnut too. Whoever built this barn around 1880 used local wood. Some of it is from hard to find chestnut. There's also some heavy duty oak in there. And the guys who built this reused parts from other barns. So we're salvaging a barn made out of salvage. Pretty cool. Plus, we find a bonus on this property. Out back, there's an old chicken coop which we can rework into a tool shed with attitude. And that's not all. There was another client that came in, mm -hmm. and they were looking for a TV stand. So when I was up at the barn, I was kind of thinking maybe we could take some of the beams, maybe mix in a little bit of industrial salvage we got here at the shop. The barn is going to be the gift that keeps on giving. All right, so why don't you guys get your stuff together, and let's go check the sucker out. Sounds good. You can't use a crane on this job. The barn's way too unstable. There's only one good way to do this. We're gonna yank this old sucker down, because it's gonna be safer. Some of those beams are like 12 by 10 by 25 feet long, and we can't handle those up in the air. So we'll pull it down, but first we wanna see what we're dealing with. The barn builders shape the beams with an old tool called an as. You can see the marks of each stroke. These beams have history written all over them. When you first come upon a job like this, we look at the beams, we figure out which ones are worth taking, which ones aren't. We figure out if the ones we cut are the ones that are gonna actually take the barn down on top of this. Risky, but worth it. Most barn beams are chestnut, pine, or oak, depending on where they were built. Longer, wider beams get the best price, between five and $15 a foot. Most of these are medium sized. They'll go for up to $10 a foot. Before we pull the barn down, we remove the flooring to get to some of the upper beams. Let's go straight down the ground, straight down. Hey. Hey. And then walk it up right. That's not bad. At up to 25 feet, carrying them out one by one ain't gonna work. We need machinery. Bring on the skid steer. All right, that's, yeah, that's a nice one. 23 feet. It's really cool because you got all your mortise holes I mean, look at the size of some of these. Look at the size of some of these old cut nails. Let's go get the other beam out and let's put this baby on the ground. This 30 by 80 structure is barely standing. We'll have to go nice and easy with the final teardown. Now I'm just eyeing this thing up. I mean, this little tiny thing here. Is holding up, I think, this roof. So this whole wall here is loose, it's rotted. The whole place is shaking. It's going to come down. It's going to be kind of cool. We'll pull down the main supports first. We're going to attach these chains to a couple of these beams. It's going to pull the bottom beams out, which is going to wipe out all the uprights, which is going to take the barn to the ground. It's coming downtown, baby. Ready? Yeah. Is everybody clear? <laughs> Oh, 
but it's too much of a monster to pull down in one go. I want a clean jerk. We'll have to do this in stages. I want a jerk. You all clear, Dad? Watch out for that. Well, this one, this one's probably pretty dangerous right now. Is this one you hear? Dun dun dun. It's creaky, and I heard some creaking in there. You gotta be careful. Man. You can't rush this process. We keep reattaching the chain and bringing it down section by section. Are we clear? Was it going down? Ooh. That's good stuff, man. Nice. Yeah. High five. Nice. Nice. Sweet. If you want ideas about how to use salvage barn wood, go to DIYNetwork.com. Coming up, we make a tool shed that looks like a blast from the past. What do you think, man? Ah, oh, it's awesome. Oh, Love it. It came out great. And we make the old very, very new. I'll tell you what, I'm, you know, I'm totally psyched with a TV stand that rivals the flat screen it's meant for. We pulled down a 130-year-old barn so we could salvage some kicking chestnut beans. And we're about to take a chainsaw to an old corn crib turned chicken coop and rework it into a kick-ass tool shed. So my thoughts here are is that we could take this right about here and just cut it. You're strong. Thank you. <laughs> I have my Wheaties Corrupted. this morning. So we'll cut it, we'll pull the tin ceiling off and what we're gonna do basically is load, pick this up and load it on our trailer, bring it back to the shop. It may not be much to look at right now, but it's got strong bones, a solid oak framework, and a tin roof. Yeah, there's plenty of it. We've got plans to turn this thing into the king of all tool sheds. We're basically just gonna cut right through the middle. We're just gonna basically separate the whole thing. I'm gonna come in with the machine. Right we're gonna, here? Right under there, okay. we separate the forks as far as we can. At about 20 feet long, it's too big for a shed, so we'll hack off the back eight feet. Just the size we need. The coop is resting on cinder blocks, so I can pick it up with the skid steer. Ready to lift it? Yeah, we're ready to lift. Uh, what I need is both of you guys, I'm gonna put the forks underneath, we're gonna lift it up, we're gonna try to pry those cinder blocks loose, we're gonna get it in there nice and tight, we're gonna put a ratchet strap around the whole thing, attach it to the forks, and we're just gonna lift up and back it out of here. Hopefully. Just like that? Just like that. <laughs> ready? Yeah. <laughs> I do. Little muscle knocks this thing off its feet. Here. Oh, whoa, whoa, Josh whoa, whoa. uses a ratchet strap made of heavy duty webbing to keep it together. Lifting a chicken coop or any little building like this sometimes can be a little bit of a problem. It could tip over, the machine could tip over, it could be too heavy. You gotta be really careful. All right, so we pulled this barn down. We've got some great red oak beams and white oak beams. We've got our cooling crib. We're gonna take it back to the shop and turn it into a tool shed. The weather's not with us, but we can still get to work on the shed as soon as we get it unloaded. Our chicken coop needs siding to close it up. I've got some great one by six oak planks that we salvaged from a pattern. We're gonna measure from the top down to the top of the board here. 
the old paddock boards from the farm will work out. And they're, they're looking killer. Yeah, it looks great. All right, uh, let's get some more. These boards you cut up earlier. Let's turn this one in, let's see. Hang on, hang on, stop. It's kind of like a boat, but we can push that one in. Yeah. That's fun. We're using old style square cut nails. They cut through the grain and are less likely to split the boards than round nails. Go with the grain, too. And the nail heads look great with the old wood. This is so much better than a new prefab shed. I'm loving it. Coming up, why would anyone want an old window like this? Wait and see. Then I can use my superhuman strength and... <sighs> and just because something's a little rusty is no reason to give up on it. Yeah, dude, that's all. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I like that. yeah, you can see the little circles coming around. Okay. We're overhauling this burn out of a chicken coop and turning it into a righteous tool shed. We scored the coop from a 19th century farm, where we also rescued these from an old barn, hand-hewn chestnut beams. We're gonna take a couple of them into the 21st century, using them to make a stand for a flat screen TV. Well, you know what I'm thinking? We'll go get some funky bases. I got, I got a bunch of stuff over there. We use a couple of metal bases, Take this beam, we'll cut this bad boy in half, put a little spacer in between maybe, a couple through bolts, sit it right on top. I mean, just mix them with the old, with the new. All right, let's go. Somebody worked really hard to make this beam 130 years ago, but I'm going the modern route with a chop saw. The biggest problem with cutting a heavy beam like this, you gotta take your time because your blade heats up. Slow and steady. Slow and steady, baby. Maxed out. Yeah, we maxed out. So let's roll it over. Flip it gingerly. <laughs> there we go. One more time. All right. Well, the depth of our blade wasn't as thick as the uh, depth of our board here. So we're almost through. And that's that. We go looking for just the right window to get some natural light into our tool shed. Ladies first. We need one that'll fit into the rustic thing we got going on. We went around the shop, looked around. We finally decided upon a real old rustic window that we had taken out of an old beach house probably about two years ago. What do we got here? Hey, Josh. Yo. This might work. What you got? Some of the glass is broken, so Josh will have to cut new panes. A lot of people shy away from cutting glass, but it's so easy. You, know, you just need a, you need a glass cutter here. It's only a couple bucks, got a diamond tip, a uh, T-square, and a little bit of glass cutter oil. Using this old pan, I'll just come in at 10 inches and mark this a couple times. Dip in a little glass cutter oil for some lubrication. All right, now I just bring my T-square over. I gotta try to line up on my line. I might wanna cut it a hair short. The glass is a little bit oversized. Uh, just doesn't wanna fit in the, the paint, so <laughs> let's keep it just a hair short. All right, now I just kinda put firm pressure on the glass, and it basically just scores the one side here. And uh, then I can use my superhuman strength and... <sighs> Voila. So the, uh, the glass cutter really does all the work. It's the pros, I've been doing this since uh, kindergarten. The TV stand is not a complicated project. It's just an ultra cool one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this four inch box channel and then we're gonna get our beams, we're gonna put them on each side. Uh -huh. Metal's gonna be the spacer with the wood on the outside. That will make it the right depth for our TV. But I need something for the base. Like this might be cool, but it has to be a little bit higher, so I'm really thinking about making these into a hanging light, but this is it. Look at this. Oh, yeah. 
These stainless pieces will make a great base. This is really cool. Good stainless has a lot of nickel in it. This is so-so. It needs a little bit of a brush up. All right, so dude, here's the, uh, here's the base I found. Oh, that's pretty cool. Josh uses a grinder with a flexible sanding disc to buff away the rust. What a difference. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. That's sweet. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, you can see the little circles coming around. Nice. It's almost like a drooling. Yeah, yeah. We'll take it apart to get to the space bar and burn holes in it with an oxyacetylene torch. We then we can bolt it to the wood. All right, so I got the torchy torchy. Oh, man. I better back up. Whoa, look at that. Lighter anymore? All right, so we're going to burn a little hole in here. It's going to give us a little bit more room, a little more leeway than uh, doing an exact hole. An oxyacetylene torch burns right through metal. Now we can bolt the pieces together. Now that's a hole. If you want more ideas about what you can do with salvage, go to DIYNetwork.com. Coming up, how to make a new tool shed look like it's always been there. It came out great. I love it. It's awesome. And make the old work with the new. <laughs> Why not mix television and barn wood? I have to admit that I really like that. It's a scorcher, yeah. We're well on our way to finishing up some killer projects. A TV stand made with amazing old chestnut beams. That boy's getting heavy now. And stainless steel supports. Plus a rustic tool shed built from an old chicken coop. All right, Josh, let's get this back closed up. Cool. We're using oak fencing board for siding. It's going to look great. But before we finish the siding, we have to make sure our reclaimed window is going to fit. Grab that window. I pretty much, I measured it earlier. I figured out that we need to go about, the studs will be 21 and a half inches in from each side. Right. That'll be just enough for the window to fit in there. When we put the window in, let's try to keep the top, actually the back of it, eight inches off of the, eight inches off of the header. I got you. All right, so why don't you go grab that. Okay. I found a window amongst the 600 windows that I had laying around, but we found the one that actually worked. The whole jam was there, the fascia, the trim, everything. Let's see if I can get this hammered into place. Perfect fit. That's pretty good. So hold that window up there for me. The siding's going to go on first, and then we'll just tack the window on over top of the side. It's going to go approximately just like that. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it's going to look sharp. All right, cool. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Willis. We'll install the window later. It's looking good. Not bad. Just a few more feet of siding to go. This thing has a great shape to it. The window will add character. It'll be a total fit with a rustic farmhouse. Our TV stand is nearly done. I drill holes in the beams and Josh installs the 16 inch bolts. The elbow grease. Perfect stubborn little guy. We add washers and nuts to hold the bolts in place. I clean up the rough edges with a grinder. This thing's got to weigh probably about 150 pounds, right? Alright. Oh, Man. Ah, that's hot. I tell you what, I'm you know, I'm totally psyched. Ah, that's hot. Ah. I have to admit that I really like that. It's a scorcher, yeah. The old 1880 barn we salvaged was the gift that kept on giving. We found gold and material that would have been destroyed and reused it for amazing new projects. We bolted chestnut beams to either side of an old metal pole, 
added stainless steel supports, and came up with a cool modern TV stand. And we took the solid oak frame of a broken down chicken coop and restored it with siding from an old fence. A reclaimed window lets natural light into a vintage shed. Josh had a client that was looking for a tool shed and we were able to come up with one that was just perfect. It was just exactly the way they envisioned it. We made it completely out of salvage materials, built it up, they're so excited, they thought the buffalo head was the greatest touch. What do you think, man? Ah, uh, it's awesome. I love it. It came out great. A TV stand from Barn Beans and a solid tool shed from a broken down chicken coop. They're both good for years to come, courtesy of the past.